guys, welcome to day one of week two on the Shock and Awe program. Hope everybody had a great weekend. I know I did. Hope all you had a great first week of training. I know I did. I know Smitty did. Uh, it sounds like from the feedback we received that you guys did as well. Um, one of the things it also sounded like was the fact that the first week of this program beat the hell out of you a little more than you were expecting. Uh, because again, program doesn't look like much on paper. Uh, the workouts weren't long, but man, we had a lot of people saying, holy shit, like I am sore as hell. That workout beat me up. Man, I, you know, I was shocked at what it felt like, blah, blah, blah. Hence the name, shock and awe. But so I wanted to, before we start training today, I just wanted to address a little bit of the method behind the madness because of that feedback. Uh, you guys, a lot of you guys saying, well, I can't believe how sore I got. And a bunch of you said, I can't believe how sore I got. And I was surprised because this wasn't a typical Joe D and Smitty workout where there was a bunch of, you know, off the wall, crazy exercises that I had never done before. You know, obviously, if you do a bunch of new exercises that your body has never done before, you kind of expect to be sore. But when you look at this program, what did we do? We benched, we squatted, we deadlifted, we did some rows, some lat pull downs, some curls. You know, these are basic, basic barbell lifts, basic accessory lifts that most of us have been doing our entire lives. So why the hell did this workout kick the shit out of us so much? Speaking of kick the shit out of, I apologize if you hear drilling and banging next door. I don't know how much the camera's picking it up, but they're doing construction. I asked them to keep it down. Um, I don't know if they spoke English, but if they don't bring it down, I'm gonna throw a kettlebell through the friggin' door in about two seconds. So hopefully, calm down, see it work. But anyway, real quick, I, I wanted to explain the method behind the madness because Smitty and I really like to we don't just like giving you programs. We like to kind of educate a little bit as well and show that there is a reason and a purpose behind what we do. And the reason why you guys are feeling so sore with these basic exercises is this program touches upon the most forgotten training stimulus out there, and that is rep range. And this is one of those things, I'm not sure if the research backs us up on this or not. The research might say something totally opposite. I'm not sure, I haven't looked into it. But what I found is that the, the rep range is probably the stimulus that our body adapts to the quickest. Yet, how often do we ever really change it? And I'm not talking about going from, you know, 12 reps to 8 reps. You know, I'm, I'm talking about drastically ch change the rep range and really change that stimulus. Most of us live, you know, in the, the 5 to 15, 5 to 20 rep range. I know that's kind of broad, but that's where most of us live in all of our training. Heavy days, light days, hypertrophy days, it's usually in that, uh, that bracket, 5 to 15, 5 to 20 reps. What we did with the Shock and All program was we went way on the other ends of the spectrum doing heavy singles and doubles on one end and super high rep 100 rep sets on the other end. Now, most of you have never done that before, but it also proves that, you know, the, the rep range is that forgotten component because listen, I've probably done 10,000 sets of bench press in my life, maybe more, yet that Thursday workout with 135 pounds kicked my ass. How can that be? You know, I'm a guy pretty strong in the bench press. I've been bench pressing for 30 years, yet 135 pounds kicked my ass. Why? We finally really drastically changed up the rep range. And, you know, a lot of us will change up the exercises, and that's great. But what I'm learning is, and what I really realize now is, your body... your your body probably, you know, takes the longest to adapt to the exercises, you know, meaning, in other words, you could probably get more out of the same exercise than we previously thought. 
you know, we could stick with the same exercises longer than we thought. But the, the, the variable that we probably do need to change more if we want to make constant progress is the rep range. And that's what the shock and all program does. That's why you're experiencing such shock uh, after only the first week. And that's why after only three weeks, you will notice, you know, as significant of gains that you could get in three weeks. I don't know if that's in a grammatically correct sentence, but you know what I'm saying? You will get as, as much results as possible in that short period of time with this program. So that's a little method behind the madness. Uh, we want to give you guys a little insight. Jump inside, Smitty, and, and my brain. It's, a, it's two scary places, but that is the method behind the madness. Now that you know a little more, you know, hopefully you, 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 know, you believe in the program and you'll get even more out of it. So enough of me talking. I'm sick of hearing them drilling. Let's hit the gym. All right, I'm done acting like a child. Uh, but honestly, besides the fact that I'm friggin' 40 years old going on 14, that's a whole nother issue I could talk to my uh, shrink about. But <laughs> it's actually really cold in here today and after I went through my warm up, I didn't even have a sweat cracked. So I wanted to, to move around a little bit before I got on the bench because we're going heavier today. Uh, got 10 more pounds on the bench from last week. So I want to make sure I got a little bit of a sweat going, get my heart rate up a little bit more. So we always talk about ending your warm up with a sprint, a jump, or a throw. Once I went through my warm up, did a couple med ball throws, still didn't feel warmed up. I got one of those throwback footballs or pass back. Basically, you could see you, you throw it against the wall and you can have a catch with yourself on those lonely Monday mornings when you're at the gym by yourself before everybody gets here. So. Um, that was that. Uh, not saying you have to add that as part of your warm up, but I, I put the camera on because just wanted to show that it doesn't really matter what you do, just do a little something dynamic, get a sweat cracked, fire up the nervous system before you train. You don't want to hang for you know a minute. And then that was kind of a little, although it's great for my shoulders, it kind of relaxed me a little bit. And the, the fact that it's cold in here today, uh, we needed to do something extra. So just that, you know, starting off slow, catching, then I added like a little five yard sprint to the mix, did that for about five, 10 minutes, I'm ready to go. So let's do it.
All right, guys, so I finished my warm-up sets. I got 325 on the bar, which is 10 pounds heavier from last week. This week we are increasing the weight, decreasing the volume slightly. Not gonna lie, weight's feeling a little heavy today. Once I started warming up, still have a little soreness in the chest, shoulders, tricep region. Uh, body's getting used to the, this type of training, so we'll see how this goes. I'll do the same thing as last week. I'll, I'll show you my first two or three sets and my last. Uh, so you guys can get a gauge of how easy or hard it is for me today with the short rest intervals and the heavier weight. Oh, as you can see, I'm benching off of Donnie Thompson's fat pad today. Um, basically, it's fatter, it's both wider and thicker, so it makes it easier to kind of dig your shoulders in and your upper back which makes it easier on your shoulder joint um, and much easier on your low back. I talked last week about I elevate my feet when I bench to take some of the pressure off my low back. Benching on the floor like this it takes a lot more stress off the low back. The only issue is, and it just hit me as I'm talking, you do, you get less of a leg drive and that's probably part of the reason why the weights feel heavier today. I kind of forgot that. Uh, you, you lose a lot of the leg drive from laying down. But for me, you know, being careful and taking care of my low back is a little more important to me than how much weight I lift. But I'll suck it up and I'll still get uh, It might be a little more difficult than I anticipated, but I will get it. All right, here we go. Every minute on the minute. Perfect. Big hand is on the 12. Definitely feels a little heavier than last week. It's because it is a little heavier than last week. Whew. Hopefully, as I continue to get warmed up, it, it starts feeling easier rather than heavier. Got about another 10, 15 seconds. Whew. All right, here we go. Hey guys, I am back. Two more sets. Got about 15 seconds. So sets two through five started feeling like they were getting a little lighter and easier. Weight was going up. And then after five, not gonna lie, started, weight started feeling heavy. So last two should be interesting. Oh man, I must have talked a couple extra seconds there. Whew. See this last, I only got about 20 seconds left on this last one. Got to keep it sharp every minute on the minute. Whew. 10 seconds. Got to get this. Whew. All right, here we go. Last set. Ugh.
Done. That sucked. All right. Did my first set of dumbbell bench. Now I'm on my max rep set. I did 100 pound dumbbells for 21 reps last week. So got to get 22 reps this week. Now you might say, you know, it's all relative because I, we did more, we went heavier on the bench. So how are we expected to go heavier on, you know, all the rest of the exercises that follows? Logic would tell us that maybe uh, we're not going to be, but this is the shock and awe program. We kind of say F logic every now and then and say it's only three weeks, so we're going to try to friggin' progress on everything. So here we go. 100 pound dumbbells for 22, hopefully. Got it. Yeah. 